Good morning, Matt here from West Coast Shaving's Daily Shave video series. And for today's Daily Shave, I'm going to be doing another vintage straight razor shave and soap review. Uh, for today's soap, I'm going to be covering an artisan shaving soap by Scott Stewart from Ferndale, Michigan. This is Declaration Grooming, and this is Chaotic Neutral. Um, the brush is going to be West Coast Shaving's Infinity Brush, and this is sporting a 26 millimeter knot. This is a Wisco shaving knot. It's um, the three band finest uh, badger knot. And uh, it's set very deeply in the uh, handle in a way that allows for um, the brush to really splay. There's no glue bump at all that you can feel. And the knot splays very easily. It releases the, the lather very easily. It's a very, very good performing knot, really dense knot, soft. Um, and it actually has a very big bloom to it, covers a lot of ground, really like the knot. Uh, it also, the brush handle actually matches the scheme of the soap. That's why I picked, went with it today. But that is the Infinity, Infinity brush. And for the razor, I'm going to be using this uh, Philharmonica. It's a vintage from uh, after 1950, it's um, first generation Philharmonica, um, and it's part of this uh, Torino Medallion or the bull bullfighting uh, metal series. It has a little vignette on the face of the razor there, and this one is the Capote. There were six of them, so it's pretty collectible. Um, has a spike point. It's almost a wedge, maybe a near wedge or a quarter hollow razor, really nice razor. And with that, I'm gonna wet the face, fill my scuttle, and get started. I'm also gonna give some straight razor tip today on how to get a smoother and more fluid shave from it with a straight razor. So I'm just gonna use that amount. It's about a quarter of a teaspoon. The soap is very soft, very soft, almost like a cream. So if you do load out of the puck here, it's gonna create, um, you know, you may overload it. So I suggest scooping some out and loading from a bowl, which is what I'm doing. I'm going to wet the brush and then just give it two or three shakes to get most of the water out and then just load from my scuttle. So I'm just, I'll show you what I'm doing. Just going back and forth in the scuttle to load up the soap into the bristles. And I can just add a little bit of water at a time into the bowl and that's gonna help load the soap into the brush. So the scent, right out of the gate, it's about a six out of 10 scent strength. So a little bit above medium. And the scent is described as being inspired by uh, warm tea. And I definitely pick up on that. I don't think it's meant to copy tea. I think tea is one of the notes, but it definitely gives the impression of kind of a warm, spicy tea. And there's a lot of notes in the soap. So I think there's oak, there's cardamom, there's clary sage, patchouli, and then there's tobacco and uh, bourbon note as well. I think also a sandalwood, a sandalwood accord. Just gonna add a little more water. And there's also a tea note. So um, I think some of those notes, especially the tobacco, the patchouli, and um, 
and the bourbon, they sound like they're gonna be very strong, very, um, you know, very bold kind of uh, scent notes. Um, but I think the tea, the tea note, the addition of the tea helps to make it so it's not so heavy, not so dense smelling. It kind of like makes it a little bit more transparent and a little lighter. There's also a little bit of amber in here. So there's a little bit of sweetness, but I wouldn't call it a sweet scent. And I think it does achieve kind of uh, the impression of a warm cup of tea. Okay, and I think I'm good and loaded here. Clary Sage, I think, is pretty strong on this one. And that one kind of reminds me a bit of lavender. It gives like a little earthiness. And it works well with the tea note, which is giving it some minerality. And you definitely get a, like a good dose of the cardamom, which I really like as a scent note in general. But generally, if the soap has cardamom, I do enjoy it. And cardamom is kind of like a fresh spice, or at least it comes across that way to me as uh, maybe like a cool spicy scent. Very easy to make the lather here. I'm all, I already have like a really dense lather and now it's feeling kind of heavy on my face. Like the density just increased here. I'm gonna add a little more water, paint some in. This can take a lot of water and it's easy to work with and it works over a wide range of, let's say, levels of hydration. So if you flood it, it's not gonna kill your lather necessarily. But if you use less, it's still gonna work as well. And I think I'm where I wanna be. Lather has a nice sheen to it. And I just wanted to show off some of these peaks. Lather's flying around. And let's get started on the shave. So this, so even though this does have a lot of really strong scent notes to it, like the oak and the, the bourbon and the tobacco, I think it's not necessarily a polarizing scent. I think it's actually a really kind of a, a crowd pleasing scent. That's what I get from it. Making a really nice lather with this. Stretch. This razor is really sharp. So my tip today 
my straight razor tip of the day is going to be about how to get a more fluid and how to get a smoother straight razor shave using a technique I'm calling a gentle landing technique. And um, I think the theory behind this is, is that you're trying to cut down on the resistance and the uh, friction that is naturally occurring when you're moving an object, like a razor over, your, over a surface. So if I'm remembering from high school physics, um, the force of friction is a lot stronger when you're starting off at a, um, at a standstill. So in other words, the object isn't moving, it's on the surface and then you're pushing it along to start. So if you're starting from you're going from a starting point where you're you're uh, at a complete standstill, it's going to require a lot more force. Sort of like when you're taking off on a plane, it takes a lot more force to take off than it does to uh, touch down and land. That's why I'm calling it gentle landing technique. And the idea is, instead of laying the razor on your face and then moving like this. The idea is you're already moving the razor, starting to move the razor before you're touching the skin. So you're, so you're landing gently. Now this technique I think is a bit of a more advanced technique. And I think I just started to do it uh, kind of naturally after shaving for a number of years without really realizing what I was doing. But then you watch other people and you notice that some other people do it as well. Um, so I'm going to shave up and again, I'm going to start moving the razor before I touch the skin like this. So the razor's already in motion. And what this does is it, it actually, it actually makes, makes you able to glide the razor with less force. And I think it allows for a smoother shave. So it is, I think, a little bit more of an advanced technique because you're, you are moving the razor before you're touching it to the skin. So if you're coming in at maybe too steep of an angle, there's a chance you could cut yourself. So I don't necessarily recommend using this technique if you're just starting out. And you don't have to use it on all parts of your face. You know, I just, in certain areas, I think it helps get a smoother shave. And a more fluid shave. I just think it helps um, it helps by keeping that blade in motion and touching down gently 
it helps so that you don't require as much force. to move that razor. There we go. And I'm gonna move on to the third pass. And I just build it up a bit more. I added some water to my face, so. I may just have to splay the brush a little bit just to build it up like that. Now, aside from the slickness, the density, I also really enjoy the face feel, and that's something that not a lot of people talk about when they talk about um, shaving soap, but it's definitely one of the properties I enjoy the most, so. It has a really creamy feel to it. It's appealing to use. And I'm gonna now go towards my chin. This side, now towards my chin, towards my chin. There we go. So I had another video where I used kind of like an egg beater technique. So in other words, we're making circles, and it's the same principle like this, where that blade is in motion before you touch the skin. Oh, and I think I got a little weeper there. Not a big deal, I didn't feel that one. I know the names that I come up with for these techniques are kind of silly. And I think I'm the only one who uses them. They haven't caught on. Okay. I'm trying to have fun with it. So if you are a beginner with a straight razor, I do suggest maybe you um, get a little more comfortable with the razor before you attempt this one. The gentle landing. But if you're able to do it, I think you'll find that you are getting a more fluid and 
smoother shape. So that soap base, it really does stick to the skin. To me, that's a good sign for a shaving soap. It usually means it's gonna offer a lot of protection. And this one definitely does. Really dense lather, great slickness. The post-shave is awesome. So I think I'm gonna forego a post-shave product today. Um, there's no tightness after the shave. All the moisturizing ingredients, the lanolin, the goat's milk. Um, you can really tell the difference with this one. Um, the scent, I think a lot of people are going to like, I don't think it's a polarizing scent. It's, uh, I think it does give the impression of a warm cup of tea, a warm, spicy tea. Um, let me know. What do you think? Do you ever employ this technique where you're keeping that blade in motion before you come to the face? Let me know what you think of my tip and the review. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you next time.